for me what has been so exciting about doing the Batman and then getting to do the Penguin is trying to think of this as a giant tapestry about Gotham, about the Batman world. Matt's version of Gotham was very dark and gritty and felt extremely grounded. And that was really interesting to me. There were certain kinds of aspects about the way we shot the movie that I wanted us to carry over into the series. But then the series also had to feel different because that was the Batman's point of view. And this needed to be Oz. And Oz is much more on the streets. It was such a beautiful interpretation and their very own specific take on Gotham. We get to see a different side of Gotham, those that are really affected by the corruption of the city. We're really with the have-nots in our world. So we looked for a lot of arches and a lot of bridges to ground the characters underneath structures. We watched a show, the very first shot, we're up above looking at Gotham, but immediately the camera starts to descend all the way down to street level, so low that we're looking up at the license plate. We talked about where is Gotham? What city should we be echoing in our design? It's very grounded in New York City and New York City history, architecturally. We focused a bit more on older architecture, but Gotham is also a city that's always under construction, which is great if you're filming in New York because everything's always under construction here. Because we start the day after the Riddler bombs, the flood, of course, was a very big discussion, and the seawall, and where exactly the bombs were. So we talked about the five levels of flooding, with five being the hardest and one being the lowest. And we talked about how each neighborhood is affected by it. With this, they wanted to have a lot of water, a lot of rain. And when we do the wet down, it can be anything from Hudson sprayers in our hands, or if we need to actually manipulate and use pressure, then we'll attach to a water truck. Iceberg Lounge, because it was so close to the seawall, and Crown Point are the worst neighborhoods. We researched Hurricane Katrina. We researched floods in Germany and Spain and Europe, and really looked like immediately after a flood, what is left in the street. I think we dumped four tons of dirt on that street in order to create the level of flood that we needed to create and broken lampposts, etc. And then we broke the awning. So we found a great portion of large metal tress to put our set in. That was the challenge, was to find a location. For the Penguin, we knew that we would have to show this world. We can't just stay down on the street. For my entire visual effects crew, I asked them, hey, anytime you see something cool on the horizon or looking down at a street in Manhattan, take a photo. This very much was super useful in designing some of our skylines. There are a few shots where we're looking high and wide through where the waters haven't receded yet. Look at this, what that madman did. The thing we felt that made Gotham look flooded was the clash of seeing water next to things where water doesn't belong. To execute the shot, we basically rebuild the actual location in 3D because what we do is we simulate the water and calculate all the variables of water pressure and the strength of the concrete, that at what point is the concrete gonna break, like when the freeway collapses. We knew this was a really key moment to set up for our show that there are still parts of Gotham that are beyond getting the help they need from the flood. Underneath the design, there is a real grounded architectural vernacular to all of it. And then we get to interpret and give it that extra special look. What's exciting for me is to be able to have a smaller piece of terrain that just is exploring this world in all of its different facets. This is a very special and privileged experience, and it's something that's been a dream of mine really from the beginning. 